her all the way. Actually, I could be leading into the meeting, it could be leading into my church, but here we have the first instance of, of a plan of death, which for centuries was prohibited by the Catholic Church, because it triggers such uh, um, discordant thoughts that sin could result. This is an even more discordant chord, but it doesn't contain a plan of death. section of chromaticism, which is also possible called Tristanism. Tristanism is uh, a practice of using the liberal accidentals that began in 1856. But now Tristanism is, is melting into this consonant Stephen Foster as a progression, but now it's, it's teaching us a little bit more Tristanism. And it could be nowhere, but it makes sense that it's probably resolved. Now we're back to the first two chords. toilet in an airport or other, other public place. Do you? I, I, I use the uh, disabled loo frequently in, in airports, and I think everybody does, but I don't feel guilty. I feel more worried about the, the self-fulfilling prophecy aspect, where because you are, are doing something for disabled people, maybe you will be signing up for disablement somehow in the future. I'm always terrified of the the idea of the sound of running jackboots down the corridor. I look out, I see perhaps a wheelchair coming farther down the corridor that way, and then some officials with jackboots coming that way, and the officials might get there first, and they'll demand to see my papers to show that I'm officially disabled. And then the wheelchair will arrive, and he'll say, what are you doing in there? I'm disabled, you're not disabled, I've got worse disabilities than you have. Do you get those feelings? And it could be the uh, jackboot wearing officer himself who has some slight disability. It's the equal opportunity employers. Uh, would result in this. And, uh, and, and the disability, of course, could be a gigantic elephant-like boil coming out of the anus of the person. This is every symbol you see on every disabled toilet has this revolting elephantiasis. Yes, it's a, it's a tumor larger than, than the, his brain. It's an erection. And How long would you give this fellow to live? I would give this fellow uh, three months to live. Three months to live, I think so. And in that condition, how could you do you have some kind of poker or snap game that you can play with a disabled person to see whose disability is worse? I have an eye patch, I have a disability in my eye, I can't see, but am I going to argue with someone whose arms are withered, stumps, little hands, coming out of their shoulders? No. You wouldn't argue with him? I wouldn't argue with him, and I don't know who would be on the side. Well, I think um, uh, there's a positive side to this self-prophesying. Uh, Disablement uh, on the in the future, you could be disabling uh, your potential to be disabled. That's a very good thought. Have you ever noticed how wonderful the equipment is in this disa these disabled toilets? So you have wonderful red cords and orange flashing lights, so a place where you can lie down and rest, and you can <laughs> bathe your genitals in the basin, and nobody gives a damn. It's true, and yeah, they're much cleaner. Much cleaner. Yeah, it's it's a paradise amongst toilets. Have you ever been interrupted while you were in a disabled room? Well, the locks, they're designed to be interruptible because disabled people might be flailing helplessly on the floor and dying. That's true. <laughs> so people must break in at any moment, nurses and doctors and those people. So are they consequently unlockable? They can be easily, a child could unlock them. With a credit card. Thing. Just with a thought. A skeleton. With a thought. <laughs> and you, have, you open. And you open. <laughs> I've done trains too. Just a button. Disabled toilet on the train. But it's a moral quandary. Am I more disabled than you? Do my disabilities count for more than yours? It's really two things that you must prove. You must prove the authenticity of your disability and... This is the kind of competition we don't want. My son is unfortunately <laughs> with Down syndrome. People are laughing at that. There is a genetic strain of mongolism in our family. Don't laugh. No. This is very distasteful. It's not an auction. 
Because it's unlike them, from what I can understand so far. I'm going to keep an eye on the troublemakers here. My son, his tiny hands. No, 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 don't. Don't interrupt me. Come ahead to the shoulders. Because of the little mind. Why is that funny? I think it's a Tourette's kind of syndrome reaction. Mm -hmm. What about your son? Explain so no! But this is your son. These are not my sons, but this is the same affliction. What about your son, David? Well, uh, my son is he's only four years old. Um, but uh, yes, my son is crippled. Is that funny? Jesus, audiences. Have some compassion, some humanist compassion. Find it in yourself. Well, David. Perhaps they'll laugh at this, perhaps not. I don't know. My son is paraplegic. But is it really so funny? I don't think they're experiencing the laughter. It's just it's a physical. My son is brain dead, you know, but you know that. It's tragic. I feel you, David. Your son is brain dead. Look, I am dying of cancer. Only hope and your last hope. We are deformed. 